Can you welcome somebody? I know we're all fasting, we're all hungry, but you can still smile. Hallelujah. The word says when you are fasting, perfume yourself. Praise the Lord. You might be seated. We thank the Lord again for this day. And I love saying, coming in the house of God, praying is not a habit. It's a favor. It's a grace. How many do you know? They would like to pray the way you pray, but they can't. Hallelujah. They want to pray, but they can't for one or another reason. And sometimes nothing physically stops them, but they just don't have the strength to pray. To put 30 minutes or one hour aside. That's the struggle of your life. Everything they do well, but coming to prayer, they can't just take one hour. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not because we can pray for two, three, four hours that. And even if you have been praying for 10 hours in your life, there can be a day where you can't even pray for five minutes. Hallelujah. The grace to start. The grace to continue and the grace to finish the race. Apostle Paul said, I've ran the race. Hallelujah. I've ran the race. And I ran the race in the regulation of the race to have my prize. Hallelujah. If we can look at the, the things of God as something that will have a prize at the end, our way of serving God will be different. Hallelujah. Sometimes we lack motivations because we don't see a price at the end. There is a price. The Bible said there is a price. But we see mostly the price when I get a salary, when I get food, when I get the girl, when I get the marriage, when I get the car, when I get the graduation. That are the price that we can see physically that motivate us. But there are spiritual prices that we will have. Hallelujah. And one of the things I have been meditating on these days is uh, God teach me how to be rich toward you. Hallelujah. Rich toward God. Amen. The word spoke about this man who after having a lot of um, fruit or his, 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 his field, his harvest was plenty and he said I will, I will store it in my barns. And the Bible said there was no place enough. He said, I will build bigger one. I think you know the story. I will build bigger one. Uh, I share it lately, if not yesterday. And he built a bigger one. And what happened to him? The Bible says his life was taken the same night. And Jesus says, so shall be the same unto those who want to be and Jesus said, why did he die? Because he was rich for himself. He wasn't rich for God. Hallelujah. Let us become millionaire for God. Not millionaire with money. Millionaire when we go to heaven. Hallelujah. Can we read the word of God? I'm in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 26 to verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 26 to verse 31. The word speaks about the greatness of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, look at the sky and see who created these things. Who brings out stars one by one. I'm reading the God word translation. Hallelujah. So look at the sky and see. Hallelujah. Look at the sky and see who created these things. Who brings out the stars one by one. He calls them all by name. Because of the greatness of his might and strength of his power, not one of them is missing. I've started preaching already. Hallelujah. You see, the one that you pray, the one that you worship, because here, 
Jacob, Israel, in other words, is complaining. My case is hidden before God. God does not see my situation. God does not see my need. God does not see my reality. Since he spoke, he doesn't see that the church is struggling to grow. He doesn't see that I haven't got employment. He doesn't see that all my first is delaying. He doesn't see that, that, that I haven't got a, a proper job. He doesn't see that I need money. He doesn't see that I'm sick. He doesn't see that they're delaying to answer me he doesn't see that they don't like your what he doesn't see he doesn't see hallelujah he doesn't see but what does the word of God says look and see who created these things I want you and I to as we are reading the words to 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 imagine in our hearts look and see even if your eyes cannot see but you have seen the stars who brings the stars? Who created the stars in heaven? It is God. Have you seen the stars in heaven? Have you seen them? The word says, look and see. It's like they are God is telling them, look and see who created, who brought them one by one. And the Bible says, he calls them all by name. So every star, as many as they can be, they have a name that God has given to them. Hallelujah. I want to exalt somebody that God knows your case. He, if he can know the stars for which Jesus never died, if he can know the stars which don't have redemption, don't have salvation, if he can know the stars that does not have his spirit, he knows them one by one. He calls them one by one because of the greatness of his mind and the strength of his power. None of them is missing. Hallelujah. God says not even one star is missing. Not even one is missing. He knows them one by one. What about you? Hallelujah. What about you? We all see that way. We all see the stars. We might all um, acknowledge that God is the one who made them, called them by name. But do we all acknowledge that it is God? Do we all perceive it in the same way? And he says, Jacob, why do you complain, Israel? Hallelujah. This is the same person God speaks about. Hallelujah. Israel. Jacob was representing also the people of Israel. God will call a nation by the name of one person. Hallelujah. Jacob, why do you complain? Harmony, why do you complain? Jono, why do you complain? Cecilia, why do you complain? Why do you say, my way is hidden from the Lord. My right are ignored by my God. He said, why are you saying so? Because you are under that impression. The thing that gives you the impression maybe is because whatever you are expecting is taking too long. Maybe because the situation has been very hard, very tough, very difficult. Hallelujah. Yes, beloved, it happens. It happens. It happens. If I can share my small testimony a few days today, the two days ago, I think, I felt urged to pray, to pray, to pray at night. And I pray, I, I slept. The next day, the day wasn't good. Yesterday was a very complicated day for us. Hallelujah. With a lot of things that has happened. And only one thing I noticed, I was as calm as possible. Because the Lord made me understanding that the devil was at work. But it came in a form of situation that I was doing my best to keep cool. Even though I, I was feeling pressure. I was feeling oppressed. But I was still finding a way. Wherever I know I'll go, I'll fight. I will try to avoid to go there. Hallelujah. Because sometimes things are tough. But these things should not make us complaining. Hallelujah. Complaining does not bring a blessing. Being discouraged also does not bring, bring a blessing. You know, complaining does not always mean you begin to talk and say, God doesn't do. Sometimes in your heart you say, ah, anyway, if, if God is not going to do that. Sometimes we have that attitude in the heart that God has forgotten me. Ah, let me do my own things. 
God sees your heart. Even if you don't speak with your lips, your heart is speaking loud for God. Hallelujah. So God says, why do you complain? Gee, why are you complaining? Why are you saying that my way, my way, my way, my way, my life, my doing, my business my, is hidden? There's nothing God cannot see because God could see all the, all the stars. God knows them one by one. God knows the, each and every hair of your head. He knows them. What about you? Hallelujah. He said, why are you saying that my right is ignored or my rights are ignored by my God? Don't you know, says the word, haven't you heard the eternal God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth? Hallelujah. He doesn't grow tired. He doesn't grow tired. He doesn't become weary. So it means if you can become tired, God does not grow tired. If you can be weary, you, God, does not become weary. Hallelujah. He does not get exhausted. Hallelujah. You can be because the thing is tough, because the thing is difficult, because the thing is taking too long. But the thing is you are getting tired, but God who promised the thing is still not tired. Hallelujah. You know, it's like the war of Ukraine and, and Russia. Ukraine was tired from the beginning. Hallelujah. But NATO came behind them. Hallelujah. As we say in medicine, they are busy doping them. Hallelujah. They are busy weaponizing them. They, they are tired, but it is the NATO, it is the US, it is all these people. They are, every day they are, they are making them fighting. It's like God. God is not tired. If you are tired, God is not tired. So it means God can still work through you. If you're tired, one thing, just remember the God who has spoken unto you. And these are words, these are a uh, 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 word of God sometimes that comes in the moment where we say, I can't take it anymore. God said, you can take it because you are not the one who put yourself in that business. I'm the one who put you that business. And as long as I'm in charge, you will take it, you will cope. I would make you see through. Hallelujah. The word says it does not get tired. It does not become weary. His understanding is beyond reach. It means his understanding is unfathomable. It's unreachable. It's beyond reachability. That's why he said unto Sarah, when Sarah laughed because God said you shall have a child, God said to her, Sarah, is anything that is beyond reachability? It means there is nothing I cannot reach. It is me who is unreachable. But there's nothing that me I cannot reach. So anything I can do with. The unreachable wisdom and power or, and strength of God is what will make you reaching whatever you have to reach. And the word says, he gives strength to those who grow tired. He increases the strength of those who are weak. Even the young will grow tired and will become weary. The young men will stumble and fall. Why is he talking about the young? Because those who have vigor in their bodies are the young people. And mostly the young people rely on the youth. But God says, even the youth that is full of strength will get tired. Yet, the strength of those who wait in the Lord shall be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and they won't become weary. They will walk and they won't grow tired. So whether you're young, whether you're old, if you rely unto the Lord, He shall renew your strength. You might be seated. Yes, we can put our hand together for the Lord, for the words. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody, put your strength in the Lord. Hallelujah. And sometimes when we speak about strength, strength is not necessarily your physical ability to do something. Hallelujah. 
strength is not only the fact that i can hold and lift this thing with one hand because this is what we believe to be strength hallelujah when we say to be strong when we speak about strength we we believe in the, the capacity to do a physical job but the strength that we are speaking about here it is not only the, the physical strength hallelujah you know there are things that God promised to you there are things that you believed God that you will do or you could do but after four five six years hallelujah after leading a church for 11 years you still not breaking through the number you have been expecting somehow you lose strength hallelujah somehow you say lord for 10 years we haven't break through 150 what's going on what are we doing wrong sometimes you get discouraged and when you get discouraged you stop doing the effort you were doing in the beginning because in the beginning you were praying in the beginning you had 30 mornings of prayer every year in the beginning july you were not fasting 21 days you were fasting 30 days in the beginning uh, december we were not fasting like few like we were fasting the whole 21 days and so and as time goes you don't see result and say what is the point what is the need of me to keep doing this thing because i don't see result i'm tired so for me not to stop it let me just reduce the workloads hallelujah has Daniel said to me, Pastor, you are growing. I said, no, I don't think I'm growing. I think I've dropped a bit. Hallelujah. So I need some strength. After you have prayed 20 years, not having a result, you stop waking up in the morning. Hallelujah. After having given your tithe for years, you still don't see a breakthrough. You stop tithing because you're tired. But what does the word say? The word says that let him be not weary in doing good. Hallelujah. Be not weary in doing good in the book of Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Do not be tired in doing good. Because in due season you shall reap hallelujah if if you faint not the problem is we faint jacob is complaining because jacob knows he has a case with god jacob knows he has a promise from god you shall be in good health you shall be a father of nations you shall be a mother of nations i shall expand you I shall make you prospering. I shall make you increase. Your posterity shall, I will. Your business shall, you, I will, I will. And now after one month, six months, six years, I still don't see it. It looks like God has forgotten my case. It looks like my right are hidden before the Lord Almighty. And God says, look at the stars. Who made them to be who they are? You see, we all see stars, but we don't see the stars the same way. Somebody can look at the stars and see yes they are stars God made them but another one look at the stars and understand that the one who made them who knows them who can them who is the one who has spoken about my case then he relate to it he becomes strong but the other one who does not see that way am I speaking to somebody when you look at the woman giving birth you say God if people are still giving birth in this world it means I can still give birth because the birth giving is not yet over Ah, I don't know if you understand what I just said. It's, if people are still becoming millionaires, it means the business of being millionaire is not yet over. My God is still in the same business. If people are still being healed, it means the healing business is not yet finished. It did not die with Jesus. It still continue even now. So my turn has to come. But for you to experience your turn, you have to do your part. What the devil is doing is discouraging you that you say your case is hidden. Once you are discouraged, you no longer qualify for what God because you stop walking with God you stop running with God you stop moving with God you say ah me I'm tired that how far I can go and then because that far you can go that how far also God can go with you hallelujah he said look at the stars who brings them one by one he calls them all by name hallelujah he knows the names of every star which does not have the Holy Spirit 
which does not have a promise which are not descendant of Abraham which are not uh, sons of the living God which are not born again Christian he knows them one by one and there's not even one that means the count when they call them one by one every morning when you call all of them not one is missing everyone come and say he i am star of the north he i am star of the south he i am oh you the masarot here we are you know the masarot the masarot is what we call the great bear la gandus it's a constellation the bible say who made the masarot who made the great beer and her children? He made the stars. That's what he says in Job. When he called the Maserat, the Maserat said, come, here I am, the great beer with my sons. We haven't moved. He knows them. He check on them. He say, it's good. You are, you are where you are. Hallelujah. Why will your case be hidden? Hallelujah. But the fact is, sometimes we get weary. If he says he gives strength to those who are weak because some people get weary. Hallelujah. And as I speak about strength, is not necessary physical strength. Sometimes you lose the strength to fight. Sometimes is what we call losing the courage. Hallelujah. You can't take it. You say, I've, I've done my best for six years. I can't take it anymore. Or I can't, I can't, I can't believe. Hallelujah. I prayed for the sick, but I didn't see much. Hallelujah. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. Nothing is happening. It looks like God doesn't see my prayer. Hallelujah. So what happened there? The Lord says, I know your case. I'm the one who called each and every star by their names. Hallelujah. Strength is the mind, but sometimes it's not physical. Sometimes it's in your soulish level. Hallelujah. Your capacity, your ability to do something to keep working, to keep praying, to keep investing, to keep believing, to keep studying, to keep waiting. Sometimes just waiting, to keep expecting. Hallelujah. Strength in the Bible is the capacity to produce. And we are not only producing physically, we produce in the spirit. Hallelujah. We produce with our emotion. We produce at the level of our souls, ideas. Hallelujah. When you lose, you, 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 you lose strength, you lose capacity even to imagine. Hallelujah. You don't even want to imagine. So if you can't even imagine, there's nothing you can do. You can, you can do. Hallelujah. But the word says he's the one who gives that ability. He's the one who gives that capacity to produce something. The word for strength in the Old Testament was equivalent also for wealth. Because your strength is part of your wealth. It's what makes you producing. It's what makes you increasing. Hallelujah. And he says... The youth shall faint. The youth shall be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. Why? Because the young man <laughs> was relying in his youth. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Because you were young, you dreamt. Because you were young when God spoke to you, you thought anything is possible. But you saw through the years that things have been difficult. After 10 years, you're no longer young. And that's why you realize that you believe you hoped because you were relying on your youth. You say, I'm still 25 years old. I can still have a child. So you were not relying on God. 
you were relying on the fact that between 14 and, and 44 you can still have a child now God takes you to 56 that way now you begin to look for a way to, to get strength because there's no more strength in you to have a child <laughs> I don't know if I speak sense to somebody hallelujah I don't know if I speak sense to you when you're young you can believe because you're young but God says the young can be weary the young can also fall so the young can also be barren in a 27 year she's still barren so it can happen to them also hallelujah but to you who believe because you were young it says look at the young they stumble Look at the young, they fall. But those who are waiting on the Lord, He renewed the strength. He renewed. Let me show you something in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 11. The word says, Hebrew 11, verse 11. The Bible says, Through faith, Sarah also herself received what? And, uh, uh, King James. Through faith, she received what? She received what? Can you see? Why? She was waiting on the Lord. Through faith, she received what? She didn't receive a child. She received strength. Hallelujah. She received strength to conceive. So she did not only conceive a seed. She had to have the conceiving is not an issue first. The strength to conceive. First she had the strength. You see, if you lose hope, you cannot conceive an idea. That will take you out of your poverty. That will take you out of your, 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 your what the words? Where you are stuck. You understand? Because you're tired, you can't think. Does it not happen to you sometimes? Maybe if mothers and fathers may understand what I say. When there's so much, Daddy, Daddy, there's this, we must pay that, we must, Mommy, we, Mommy say, please, let's talk later. I can't think. I don't know if it happened to you, Mama. Why? Mommy is tired. So at that moment, she can't produce. There are times when my wife will say, there's this, and then I say, let's talk about it later. I'm, not that I'm not in the mood, but nothing will come now. Instead, if I try to bring something, I'll bring frustration. I'll say, don't you see I'm tired? Don't you see? You see? So, it's not that I'm angry. It's that something in me, there's no more strength. Now something, I become dysfunctional. Hallelujah. I told you, I did nothing. Yesterday, today, I did nothing. I was just on a cool mode. I would just say, cool down, cool down. That's all I was telling myself. Cool down. Don't do anything. Hallelujah. From three days already. We had a small crisis. I even wanted to call my private banker. And I remember somebody said, never make a decision under pressure. Let it die. Let the pressure die. So I said, Lord, help me killing the pressure in my heart. And the pressure is dead by now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But it was a new experience for me. I said, I'll do nothing until I feel emotionally, spiritually uh, comfortable and at peace. Can you see? Hallelujah. So, so the word says, through faith, she waited on the Lord. Through faith, she received first strength. It means capacity, ability to conceive a seed. And only then that she was delivered with a child. So the child came after. Before the child came, strength had to come for her to conceive. And when God spoke to, to Abraham, she even laughed. They say, why have you laughed? She said, will my master still find pleasure? Hallelujah. Will my master still find interest? You understand? So even if the master could be able, even if you are able to do a job, to do, but do you still have the strength to do it? Okay? It is God. It is not man. When this lady brought her child to, 
to Oral Robert. She said, my son never walked, he's crippled. Can you pray for him? And Oral Robert said to the lady, I watch him saying it on TV and I watch the movie. Oral Robert said, mom, I'm tired. I prayed. You know, that guy will pray for 1,000 people one by one. When he died, they built for him a mausoleum. They, they put a symbol of two hands because he's the man who laid hand more than anyone else in the world until today. In one service, he will lay hand on 800 people, 1,000 people. Now, imagine you laid hand on 800. He's tired. When he's walking to the car, the lady said, my son's supposed to walk. He said, mom, I understand, but I'm tired. I don't have faith even to pray for your child. The mistake Oral Robert did, he thought it was him that was doing the thing. The woman said, Mr. Robert, don't worry about the faith. Do the prayer. I will do the faith. <laughs> because the one who does not grow weary is the one that was using Oral Robert. Oral Robert was exhausted, but God in him was not exhausted. You might be exhausted, but the God in you is not exhausted. The spirit in you is willing. It is maybe your physicality, your soul, which is down because of opposition, because of obstruction, because of complication, because of delay. Let me tell you, the devil is sending delay on your way to discourage you because he knows that God is able to do what he said. He wants you to think that God is not able by discouraging you. Don't we don't do anything anymore? You say, no, God was not able. No, God is able. He wants to disable you. Because if he can stop you, he can stop God working in you. Hallelujah. Through faith, Sarah received strength. You see? There was a promise, but at some stage, the strength was gone. Because I'm old. God said, look at the young. They can be also barren. It's not about the age. Because the youth rely on the youthful. They say, I'm young. I'm. When God speaks to you, you are 26 years. You are 21 years. You, you say, amen. But in your heart, you say, I have 10 years windows for me to be married. When the 10 years windows is closed, you stop looking at your body. That's when you begin to look at God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm still uh, below 40, I can have. But when you reach 44, 45, 46, that's when you say, this body can't do much. I'm tired. I've lost hope. I've lost strength. God says, now, have you seen the stars? Have you seen? I'm the one who made them one by one. I've tried every business I could. I tried every technique, every strategy I could. Nothing is coming. Nothing is happening. The Lord says that I don't get weary. I don't get tired. I am an exhaustless God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now what is the problem here now? The problem is, are you waiting on the Lord? Are you waiting on the Lord? Amen. That's why I love this song. This song is playing. This can't be. God is so much bigger than this. I was on a point where I wanted to quit. Then I heard a new call. I pray that as you sing this song, maybe you are at a point where you already abandoned. I pray that you hear a new chord that say, I'm calling you deeper. I'm calling you stronger. This can't be it. This can be it, says the Lord. And yourself also you say, this can be it. Why? Because God is so much bigger than what I'm facing. He's the one who made the stars one by one. He's the one who knows all of them by name. And when you call them, no one is missing the count. So my gaze also will not miss the count of God. 
Let us sing for two seconds. Hallelujah. I was on a place where I wanted to quit. Then I heard a new go. Look at your situation. Begin to sing this song. Look at it. This can't be it. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. I was on a point where I wanted to quit. Then I heard a new See the place that I am can no longer contain my destiny. You know, the place where you are can no longer contain your destiny. You cannot keep a baby on a crib when he's growing. When I was two weeks old, my parents were putting me in a small crib, what we call berceau. But as I was growing, they can't keep me. That place become very uncomfortable. If you feel uncomfortable in this time on your, of your life, maybe you are in a place where you are overdue. You no longer supposed to be there anymore. And if that not is the place, say, Lord, this I did the place where I am can no longer contain me. I need to move to the next stage because here I'm very uncomfortable. It's a sign that is not a place for me anymore to be yes somebody 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 sing and say lord this can be it 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 look at your problem and say this can be it this can be it this this can be it this can be god is so much bigger than this I was on a place where I wanted to quit. Then I heard a new call. It's calling you deeper, 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 deeper. It's calling you. sometime in life in the things of God all you need is strength <laughs> all you need is strength what does it mean <sighs> what you are doing is already good hallelujah but you have to keep doing what you are doing and that's sometimes where the problem comes. Hallelujah. And when God speaks this word, I believe he had you in mind. When God says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. That is Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well doing it means you do well but the thing is don't be tired in the well doing 
Because it happened that you get tired even doing well. Hallelujah. I think God had you in mind. God, we did everything possible. We did everything right. We did everything you say. Keep doing. <laughs> That's what he says. Because if you do everything well, why are you not having results? Hallelujah. I'm not saying that you are in sin. I'm not saying that you are not applying such and such law. I'm not saying that you have given up. I'm not saying that uh, 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 your, your, your sin against God. No, no, no. You are doing everything, but you are not yet still seeing what you are doing. It means if you're doing well, there's nothing wrong with you. Am I speaking to somebody? As long as everything is well with you, everything should be well. You don't hear what I'm saying. If I do everything well, I'm applying the formula the way I should apply it. It means on my side, there's no problem. I do what God said I must do. So when I do the check with God, everything is okay. So if everything is okay, I can't find the reason why I should fail. Now God says that even in well-doing, some of you can get tired. It means as long as I do well, at the end, it should go well. But the problem, the devil knows that at the end, it will go well so he doesn't want it to go well he stopped me from doing to see well he said don't be tired in well doing don't be tired if I do well I will see well he made me tired to do well so that I don't see well I am sure God had you and me in mind he said because in due season at the right season you will harvest if you faint not so it means there will be a season for harvesting as long as you faint not. We can't allow, this is a God word translation, we can't allow ourselves to get tired in living the right way. We can't allow. So it will happen, but we will refuse that allowance. Hallelujah. And only one way do not be weary. Only one way to not allow it. Hallelujah. He said, each of us will receive everlasting, everlasting life at the proper time if we don't give up. Shouldn't give up. Shouldn't give up on God. Shouldn't give up. Shouldn't give up, shouldn't give up on God. God is ever to do just what He said He will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Let Him give you strength now. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up. He's a high, He's able. So God says, do not give up doing well. For in due season, your enemy knows that if you keep doing well, you shall see what God said and that where sometime we are for five years I've been the good sister hallelujah if I can entitle my exhortation I will say wait on the Lord I've been the good sister no brother has ever seen my life my body no sister has ever seen and everybody's mocking me. She will never marry. He will never marry. And this and that. Should I give up? Should I do like everyone? Should I become a thief? Should I become a crook? Should I become a drug dealer? Should I become? Should I show my nakedness? Should I? Should I? Hallelujah. God says, as long as you're doing good keep doing it 
Lord, I've been giving in your house. I've been giving. I've been giving. I've been giving. I'm not seeing anything happen. Yes, I'm busy investing it. Your investment is not yet mature for you to start harvesting the bonuses. Hallelujah. And the word, the word says to us, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So for you to renew your strength like Sarah, for you to continue what you were doing, you need strength. How many years did you wait until? How many years Sarah waited? Hallelujah. How many years have she been waiting? 25 years or so. Hallelujah. Or oh, 45 years. She was waiting. She was waiting until she get tired to believe, to receive. At such a point, brother, God can still do it. Sister Sarah, God can give her a child. Hallelujah. I'm tired. I remember we had a, a, what do you call it, these sketches on TV, we call theater. These people, they are praying, they are singing. He's also singing. It means they are singing and say, God will do something. They say, I'm tired. You know, people are praying. God will do something. He's also praying, singing. I'm tired. So they are encouraging him. He also says, ah, I'm tired. Sister Sarah, maybe you're there. Amen. But because she believed in God, God said, she's tired. Let me first give her the strength. Hallelujah. Because if she produces with that strength, what she will produce will die. Hallelujah. When you receive something in the time where you stop believing, you will kill it. You won't even know it is. Praise God. I would like to speak about only one way to wait on the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, the word says, there was in the church that was in Antioch. We want to learn from these people. They were in Antioch. Certain prophets, certain teachers, as Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manahim, which has been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. And the word says, has they ministered to the Lord. But the other translation says, as they were waiting upon the Lord. They were waiting on the Lord. As they were worshiping. Hallelujah. Because to wait on the Lord means also to pray. Hallelujah. When you lose strength, pray. When you lose strength, stand before God. I love saying prayer is a place of power to stay in power. When you are using your phone with six applications at the same time, your battery will get weary. But when my, my, my phone is plugged, I put the charger, I plug it, I can do 200 applications, it will remain 100%. Why? I am waiting on the promises of God in prayer, in worship. So the devil cannot make me exhausted. I'm still prayerful. Whether I see it or not, I still worship God for one reason or another. And I think I told you already, what motivates, what commands our worship is not what we see, is what is inside us. Worship is from the inside out. Prayer is from the inside out. What do I mean by that? What I mean, what makes me worship is the revelation that I have of God. Not what you tell me. Not what I see. Because today I can see $100, I bless the Lord. Today I see nothing, I will curse the Lord. 
That's why Job did not curse the Lord in the days of his sickness and humiliation. Because his revelation of God was what was inside, was not what he was experiencing. The woman knew God of abundance. When abundance is God, is gone. She said, curse that God and die. He said, woman, you don't understand. Naked came I to this world, naked shall I go. Blessed be the name of the Lord who made me even coming into this world. We don't pray him because we have. We pray him because he's our father. We have talked with him. And Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 in the Amplified, Be strong in your communion with God. I repeat to you, strength is not about, um, how can I say, it's not about your physicality. Strength is, is at the soul, it's of the spirit. The spirit of man shall strengthen him in the day of bodily pain. I think I told you. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. The spirit is willing but the body is weak. Pray and watch that you do not what, fall into the temptation of stopping believing. Stop praying. Be strong in your communion with the Lord. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul said it again in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15. The word says, he prayed for the people of Philippi. And he says that he, he never stopped mentioning them in the prayer. He kneels in the presence of God uh, in whom all the family of the heaven uh, in heaven have been named that God should strengthen them verse 16 that God should strengthen them hallelujah that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man why he knows that you are facing things so the problem is not the promise of God is strength to walk until you see it is strength to keep watering your garden to keep cleaning and removing the weeds on your garden until it bear fruit you have planted something but here weed come here the devil bring a lot of herbs and and weeds and so many things so every day you have to wake up you need to water the garden by declaring declaring even when you see nothing you are watering your seed by saying this says the lord i am strong this says the lord i will accomplish this says the lord has said this you proclaim it you declare it that is you watering watering what but you say nothing but you put water how can you water on the ground where you don't see what you are watering why you know that there is a seed underground isn't it isn't it when i know there is a promise and even though i don't see the promise but the fact that i know a seed is planted i can water am i speaking to somebody as long as god has planted a seed a promise something in your life even though you don't see it don't be tired watering because you're doing good by watering and you say do not be weary in doing good because in due season you will be reaping if you are watering it means you do good don't be tired you are doing something even though you don't see it you remove the wheat you remove the wheat you do everything until some days you see something you need now that strength to wake up every morning to go and water the garden you see nothing you need that strength every day to take your wreck and start pulling the grass and all these wheat you need strength every day to come and clean you need the strength to keep doing it because you know something is happening i don't know what god God have said to you but I want you to stand up with me this evening that we begin to engage the throne of God by waiting on the Lord waiting on the Lord means to pray waiting on the Lord means to connect with God waiting on the Lord means to receive the strength from the living God so that we can continue to do what he has requested us to do can somebody lift up his voice and begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ begin to to pray begin to pray